So, does the color of Jesus Christ matter? Let's talk about this. I want to I want to speak on something that's really important. Uh, recently, there's a lot of talk, a lot of controversy, so to speak, uh, with this topic of uh, the color inv involving the color of Jesus, the Christ, or Yahshua, the Messiah. Recently, Russia has just opened up its vaults um, and revealed some ancient uh, artifacts that depict a black Christ or a black Jesus, right? Uh, and now the Western world is going crazy uh, because uh, the simple fact of the matter is, is that they don't want to accept the truth because they don't they don't like truth. They rather believe in lies versus accepting the truth. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter five, verses 11, it says, and have no fellowship. That means connection, right? Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Right. That means to expose them. That means if something is considered a lie or is hiding in the dark somewhere, Jesus said, whatever's in the dark, it need to be brought to the light. Meaning people need to understand what's going on, whether you're Jew or Gentile, whether you're white, black, yellow or brown, whatever the case may be. Right. Whatever that means. Right. <laughs> now, Jesus the Christ is depicted in uh, Russia's vault as a black man. And the Western world has a problem with that. The question is, why do they have a problem with it? They say things like, Jesus' uh, color, it doesn't matter. He died for my sins. His blood is red. Oh, yeah, praise God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with the latter, but not, but not the first. <laughs> yes, his blood is red, and he did die for our sins. Thank God for that. For the world, right? He, he came to, to be a propitiation for the entire world, which I agree. But the sad reality is is that no one wants to address the fact of the matter is, is that Jesus the Christ was a black man from the tribe of Judah and I have expressed this on multiple videos that uh, the descendants of Judah according to the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verses 11 and according to many other scriptures um, like Deuteronomy 28 it says that Judah was dispersed on slave ships throughout the four corners of the earth that happened during the sub-Saharan slave trade when the Arabs took us from the east of Africa. And it also happened on the 16th century when the Europeans or the Portuguese and all the, and then they all joined in to uh, enslave and, uh, you know, transport us uh, across the Atlantic to the Western world. Now, that was the fulfillment of that prophecy. Judah was dispersed. So when it comes to the image of Christ, all one have to do is just trace the migration patterns of his people. And then you will understand exactly what he looks like and you will understand who are the people of the book. But anyway, let's talk about the color of Jesus Christ and why it does matter and why these Christian folk, these Protestant Orthodox, these uh, Catholics, why they all have a problem with that. And when I say they, I'm talking about the European society as a whole. Not all of them, but in most cases, uh, I would say a large portion of them. And then you also have other ethnic groups that say things like his color doesn't matter. And even, you even got some black folks that say his color doesn't matter because I believe that maybe they're still suffering with Stockholm Syndrome. They love their oppressors. They love those who oppress them more than they love their own people. Now, let's talk about this for a moment. If Jesus' color did matter, first of all, why would you change it? If Jesus' color didn't matter, why would you change it? Well, the book of Maccabees, a book that the Europeans took out, uh, they try to say, oh, it's not canon because we don't want to select it. But in the 1611 King James Bible, it actually was scripture. The Europeans took out the book of Maccabees and it tells you what they would do in the book of Maccabees. And I'm going to put that on the bottom of the screen. It says that they would lay open the books and they would what? Seek to change the images into their likeness. <laughs> You see, everything was already talked about through God's people, through his people. You see, it's amazing how we can predict the future, right? Nobody wants us to talk about that. But they did this because it was all a strategy, man. It was a strategy to enforce white superiority, white supremacy. That's why they changed it, because they wanted the slaves to look up to them as their God. That's why they changed it. They wanted to be worshipped. That was one of the reasons why they changed it. Um, they also changed it because the fact of the matter is, is that 
how in the world can a, a Western Christian world worship and uh, and praise somebody that don't that looks like a black man who they hate and despise and oppress? <laughs> you see, it's a hypocritical. It's an oxymoron. How in the world can you praise someone? How can you worship someone? How can you call on someone? Jesus, save me from my sins. Hallelujah. But then on the flip side. You over here whipping the crap out of his own his people. You whipping the crap out of somebody who looks like him. You see, it's a form of insanity. Something is wrong with the brain. It's a mental condition. It's a sickness. It's a disease. It's a demon. That's what it is. You see, and they did this because they wanted to see themselves as God. And they also did this because uh, they wanted to somehow justify torturing and enslaving God's people. This is, what, this is why my people were hanging from trees, they called it strange fruit, hanging on the side of buildings back in the 40s and the 50s and the 70s, which is not that long ago, if we wanna be real, you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, we were oppressed, Jim Crow, segregation, red lines, all kind of thing, black laws. I mean, you name it. There was laws that were, we couldn't even read in the 18, 1700s. You could read and they would chop off your hand, cut off your tongue. You see what I'm trying to say? So don't give me that his color doesn't matter. His color does matter because truth always matters. Amen. And truth always comes to the light. And, it, and the thing is, is that people don't want to talk, they don't want to address it because they're deep, deeply inside of their heart, they're still dealing with racism because this stuff was passed down through generations. They can't even, you, you can't accept the fact of the matter that a black man is the one who came to die for the, for the sins of the world. You can't accept that the people who actually illustrated and actually created and actually uh, documented uh, all of this stuff about the Most High God, right? All the beginning of creation were black people. You can't accept the fact of the matter that these beautiful kingdoms, these beautiful uh, uh, palaces, like the, uh, the, the reign of David and Solomon, were black people. It just doesn't matter! 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 You can't accept that because you were taught that anything that's black is insignificant. You were taught that anything that's black is not great. Anything that's black is uneducated. Anything that's black is, is not stable. Anything that's black has no security. Anything that's black is not relatable. When all of that, at the end of the day, is one big fat lie from the devil. And the devil used the Europeans, that's the truth. He used a lot of those European nations uh, to pr promote this lie. It became perpetual to where everyone began to, to believe it. You see how great, you see when you keep lying and lying and lying, eventually, as, as, as some, uh, this is a famous quote from somebody, they said, when you lie so much and you keep on lying all the time, it said eventually it becomes true. And this is what happened. This is what happened. Can you imagine on the day of judgment? <laughs> Can you imagine on the day of judgment when the Lord comes back and he sits and he judges everybody and everybody sees him. Can you imagine the terror and the fear on a lot of these people's faces when they see that Jesus is a black man? I'm not talking about this, but I'm talking about, or dark, I'm brown, to be clear. You know what I'm trying to say? But I'm talking about dark, jet black. That's the scriptures. That's, that's, that's what he looked like, black. And the angels and the father, right? Can you imagine what's going to happen when they see him? Ooh, they're gonna be terrified. We oppressed your people. Oh my goodness. I had hate in my heart. I did this. I did that. I didn't love them. I was loving the wrong people. I thought they was in Israel. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, we've been telling you this whole time. You may say, oh, you're not, you guys are not so special. What's so special about you on Judgment Day? Well, the problem is, is that you have a hard time accepting the facts. And the facts is, is that the facts is gonna be over feelings on during Judgment Day. You're not going to be able to run away from your from your actions that you committed against your atrocities that you committed against his people. And this is why we keep prophesying, telling you that you need to repent and let people know, look, you better get that stuff out of your heart because you were lied to. You were lied to by your forefathers. They invented this so-called black man and brown man and yellow man. I think it was a guy named Blumenbeck or Blumenbeck, something like that, during the 1700s. He invented uh, uh, who's who's considered smart and who's low class. He did he invented he invented classifications based off of race. He's white. You're black. You're brown. What? Bef no. Before a long time ago, we was always known for the region, the land where we come from, or the, the person who we descend from. That's how you determine a person, not by skin color. 
But although in the scriptures we do see that the children of Israel didn't have a hard time expressing how they look. Just like Solomon, he said, I'm black or comely, right? Just like uh, in the book of Acts chapter 13, we see that they was called Niger, right? Which means black. That's some apostles and pastors that were teaching, right? So we know that, <laughs> we know that Jesus Christ's color does matter. And the problem is that people don't want to accept the fact because they've been oppressing, they've been oppressing the people who look like Jesus Christ. So now they're like, oh, I can't believe this. We've been telling you this this whole time. We've been telling you that Jesus is a black man from the tribe of Judah and his descendants, which I am a descendant and many others who, who has descendants from the slave trade, they are of, uh, their origins can, can connect them back to the tribes of Israel. And this is why this truth has to come out because the true gospel got to go to the four corners of the earth. Not that Catholic missionary, uh, uh, filthy, uh, demonic, perverse version of the Bible, right? But the true gospel has to go to the four corners of the earth. Then the Lord shall return. The true gospel, and that's what's happening right now. That's And when that, when that, feeling, when that finish going out, then he's going to come back. And then he's going to deal with everybody. And he's going to kill a lot of people when he comes back. And that's what people don't want to talk about. They're going to, going to destroy NATO. He's going to destroy all of those EU nations. He's going to destroy them. And y'all think I'm, I'm, hey, I'm speaking hate. This is the truth. Look at me. Read your Bibles. <laughs> We're going to talk about them. A true Black History Part 6 coming up soon. The next segment is Facebook trying to censor me because they don't like the truth. But it's all good. But like I said, man, y'all need to seek the truth, man, and understand that the Lord is, he ain't playing. He ain't playing. And this truth is coming out. And I'm happy. I'm happy it's coming out because our my people for so long have been oppressed and have been just just treated so unfair. And and I don't care about the small one percent, the basketball players, the doctors, the lawyers. Man, forget that. The scientists. Man, forget all that. Forget all that. I'm talking about us as a whole. The real justice is gonna come when the Lord crack open that sky and He get to start destroying people. And that's the truth. Do we want people to die? Of course not. But judgment has to come. If they don't repent, the Lord gonna deal with them. And that's just the truth. So to end this discussion, the color of Jesus Christ does matter. It does matter. And for those who say it doesn't matter, they're just living in denial. They're living in, they're denying the fact that Christ's color was changed in order to empower white people, to give white people a sense of superiority. And that's the facts. They are trying to deny that because if his color did not matter, you would you would have never changed it. And when I mean you, I mean your people. <laughs> you understand? Because y'all the one that did it. You would have never changed it and created these false images of Jesus all over the world. Even the Ku Klux Klan endorsed this white Jesus. Can you imagine a Ku Klux Klan hanging somebody on a tree, a black man on a tree, but then praying to a, a, a black Jesus? Come on, man. Come on, are you serious? Oh, color doesn't matter. Get that out of here. Um, Yashirala. Yashirala. Rise, Yashirala. Rise, Israel, Israel, Israel. Lights, camera, action. action.